want to talk uh, to you today about some real practical things uh, that I ha- have learned over the years, uh, some questions that I always ask myself. But before I do, um, y- y- you know, to, to try to establish a reason for what we're doing as worship leaders, uh, you got to understand this God's desire is to fellowship with his creation. And, and this began in the Garden of Eden and, and also when the, when the children of Israel were, uh, you know, uh, when they escaped from Egypt, um, God said in Exodus 25, verse 8, he said, let them make a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And he, this is God saying, uh, I want to be where you are. According to all that I show you, that is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all of its furnishings, just so you shall make it. So and what God is saying, build me a tabernacle that I may dwell with my people. And, and he said, and here's the pattern that you need to follow. So when we uh, step on a stage or in, in any kind of a setting where you're leading worship, uh, God has a pattern uh, to follow, uh, and, and it's, it's not complicated. Um, people ask me, what is my motivation? What, do I'm, what am I thinking about every time I get on stage to lead worship? It's pretty simple. Uh, they say, what do you expect to happen? Well, Psalm 22, verse 3 says, God is enthroned on the praises of his people. So whether there are 10 people, in your service, maybe a small group, or a hundred thousand people in a stadium. Uh, one thing you can be assured of: God has promised to be enthroned on the praises of His people. See, God is not uh, any longer just in the tabernacle. His tabernacle is among us. His tabernacle is inside of us. So when we begin to respond in worship, He comes to dwell in the midst of the praises of His people. Wow. So you think about that concept. Every time you get up to lead worship, uh, it's a special opportunity for God to speak to us, uh, for God to fellowship with us, and for us to fellowship with God. It's, uh, I've always say worship needs to be more than a monologue. We bless you. You're wonderful. We love you. If we'll listen and give God a chance to speak to us, he's going to say, I bless you. I love you. You're wonderful. It's just a, it's a dialogue. And many times in our worship services, we don't allow for those moments where God speaks to us. Uh, we get so geared into this uh, production. And nowadays, by the way, when we have all this technology at our fingertips and, and uh, a lot of churches, I mean, it, it's better than any theater They've got the big screens and they've got the lights and they've got the greatest sound system and they and they are on television and they're on a clock and they're ticking down. But you know what? People don't need another production these days. If they want a production, they can go to any show and see a great production. What people need more than a production, they need God's presence. They don't need production. They don't need pageantry. They need God's presence. And don't get me wrong, I'm not opposed uh, to these things. I love, produ- I'm a producer. I love production. I love the technology. Um, I love the pageantry, but it cannot ever replace the presence of God. And that's, what's, that's the only thing that's going to make a difference in people's lives, God's presence. 